Well, since Donald Trump descended down the staircase, he just treated Latino voters uh, with, with utter disrespect. Just disrespect. That's right, trashed them, promised to deport millions of Latinos, calling Puerto, had a comedian calling Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage. Yet, according to exit polls, woo, 45% of Latino voters uh, voted for Trump. That was up 32% since 2020. And then, of course, man, these Latino men, they just love them some Donald Trump. They just couldn't vote for the black woman. Eric Garcia, the Washington bureau chief at The Independent, he wrote an article called, I know why so many Latino men voted for Trump. I tried to sound the alarm. He joins us right now. Uh, so, Eric, glad to have you here. So, all right, what the hell happened? Explain it to us. Roland, uh, thank you very much for having me. I remember you and I were in Detroit a few earlier this year talking about this very problem. You're from Texas. You know uh, that Latinos voting for uh, voting Republican is not uncommon at all. Latinos voted for George Bush. They vote for Greg Abbott. Uh, I, my mom grew up in California. She, you know, they, she loved Ronald Reagan. Uh, the thing ultimately that happened was I think you're seeing uh, a Latinos are one of the one, one of the few groups that. Uh, uh, has one of the lowest levels of college education. And you saw that in the stratification, the swing, because about 8% Latinas moved toward Republicans by about eight points. But the swing among Latino men, particularly among Latino men between 18 and 29, was massive. And I think a big reason for this is that the Democratic Party, for better or worse, tries to treat Latinos as a monolith, as they only care about immigration, they only care about uh, you know, when Trump says racist things, but they don't actually do anything. Uh, they don't. They don't actually address the real needs that Latinos have, which is focus on the economy, that focus on uh, on shared prosperity, and they don't make the case that shared prosperity, as opposed to uh, tax cuts for wealthy people, are uh, are the way for Latinos to make it into the middle class and to make it into a successful America. Well, but also, I mean, listen. I was, I was reading an Atlanta Journal-Constitution article. Yeah. And there was a guy, Cuban, illegal immigrant, yeah. was happy to see that Trump win. And he says he knows he, he's at risk of being deported, but he's still happy Trump won. I saw another article where this one guy says he voted for Trump because of inflation, but his mama is in, here legally, and his mama might get sent back. I saw another video of a woman... Yeah. saying that, uh, I'm going to try to find a video, but her two nieces, their dad was deported. They haven't seen him in years, and her nieces voted for Trump. And she said, even though they experienced the trauma of deportation. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, this is, it, it's one of the most bizarre things. Uh, I, I think it shows that for a lot of Latinos, uh, it, it shows that, you know, for a lot of them, it's important to remember about a third of Latinos, only a third of Latinos see themselves as people of color. A lot of them see themselves as white, particularly Cuban Americans, particularly a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, Latinos and Mexicans in Texas. I'm sure that you know this, uh, being in Texas, a lot of, a lot of Mexicans, they, they talk, they sound like Rick Perry when they talk. Uh, but they, they see themselves as exempt or unique or not going to or people who are not going to be affected by the uh, by, by, by these kinds of mass deportations, even though, as we see that Stephen Miller, who is Trump's big confidant on immigration, is saying that the denaturalization process is going to begin, that they are not only are going to begin deporting naturalized people, but they're going to get in the process of uh, of removing people's legal status. But I think a lot of it is that they they, they prioritize the economy, unfortunately. Uh, you know, even if they don't recognize that they're not going to be the ones to share in the prosperity of this, and they also think that they're going to that they're going to be kind of the exempt from uh, from the, the, the deportations. Uh, well, let me tell you something right now. Uh, if 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 that dude's mama gets deported, uh, guess what? That's on him. And yeah. I'm going to play Scarface's No Tears. I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm being real honest. Uh, all a lot of these people, Eric. A lot of these people yeah. who voted for Trump, I'm sorry. I'm not going to have any tears for you when you're like, oh, my God, I didn't think it was going to happen to me. Well, who the hell will you think he was talking about when he said, I'm deporting 11 million? 
yeah, yeah. I mean, the same thing could be said about how Republican, how uh, a lot of white non-college educated voters have been the ones who have borne the brunt of the cl- the slashes into the social safety net, and yet they continue to vote Republican. Uh, they, the, you know, we see this consistently that uh, that that you know people who do benefit from Democratic policies consistently vote for Republicans. And it looks like Latino voters are going the way of a lot of white working class voters who benefit from Democratic policies, but still want to see themselves as exempt or don't want to see themselves as like those other types of people. Well, I, I think you said it when, and we also have to own up to this. I never, it was, man, it was, it was going back to 2012. I remember that was this conversation, yeah. and I was at CNN, and it was about white Latinos. Yeah. And, uh, and I remember we were, we were on, a, on a call, and they were grappling with trying to how to deal with this topic, and there was, there was one of the CNN, one of the white CNN executives goes, there's no such thing as white Latinos. And somebody on the call said, that's not true. It's I'm not true. one of them. Yeah. So one of the CNN staffers say she saw herself as a white Latino. So when we talk about um, these, th- that by 2043, you know, the nation will become a nation majority of people of color in 2023, 2043, uh, not really, because when you have a lot of Latinos uh, who consider themselves to be white or white adjacent who yeah. want to assimilate, then that's just an extension of whiteness. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we could, we could even look at, we, let's, let's even go back to the, to the beginning of the 20th century. Look, my, st- my stepdad came from an Irish American family. And for the longest time, as you know, Roland, a lot of, uh, you know, there were a lot of Germans who moved to Texas and initially Germans were not seen as initially white. Uh, the, you know, there were a lot of Italians and Poles who moved to the United States, you know, at the turn of the 20th century. And they were not seen as white. In fact, one of the reasons why we restricted immigration in 1924, 100 years ago to this day, of the Johnson Reed Act was because people didn't want to didn't want to have Italians and Poles and Catholics. And guess what? Now Italians, Poles, uh, Irish, uh, Germans, guess what? They're all seen as white. And I, it is very possible. And I've said this for the longest time. The ultimate question for American politics, the defining question, is whether Latinos are going to wind up being. Uh, seeing themselves continually as people of color or whether they're going to be incorporated into whiteness in a very similar way that Italians and Poles and Germans and Irish uh, were seen at the turn of the 20th century. Well, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I can guarantee you this. There are going to be a lot of Latinos crying, shedding tears, whining, oh my God, I can't believe this happened to me. And I'm sorry, black people are gonna say, who the hell do you think they were talking about? Eric, I appreciate it, thanks a lot. I appreciate you too, thanks, Roland. Um, l- l- listen, Niambe, it's a bunch of people who are about to find out. It's a bunch of old ass white people who are about to start crying when they Social Security gets cut. I mean, the Republicans have already introduced a bill. A bunch of these folks who love that $35 insulin, Mm -hmm. bye-bye. Oh, if they control the House and the Senate and the White House, Affordable Care Act may be in trouble. I mean, we could go down the line. And so I sit on election night. This is how Roller's gonna be looking in the first six months. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... And they're gonna be asking, how do you feel? What's for lunch? Yeah. Because, again, these are the three... Black women, American Jews, black men, top three voting folks for Kamala Harris in this election. If y'all couldn't figure it out, Come talk to us, because we know exactly who this asshole is. <laughs> well, I think we're going to be saying, don't talk to us, because we tried to tell you. You didn't want to listen. 
And I think that's the thing, you know, black women for so long have been the canaries in the coal mine. We've been the one putting our fingers in the dam, trying to hold this thing together. Everybody else is sort of going out for self. And I think it's something important that um, Greg said earlier, which is, you know, trying to make community with people who don't even see you as fully human is the end of a conversation, not the start of one. And I think what we're seeing here is that there, I mean, you know, when you look by nationality, all Latino people aren't the same, right? There are some groups that vote more like Black people. The problem is those groups may not be in the majority or not in the majority for long. And then you also have people who define their interests as anti-Black. So yeah, they might like their $35 insulin. They like not liking Black people more. And a lot of people are okay with hurting other people because they think the poop won't splash on them. Right. So when we even are talking about the deportation thing, Latinos aren't the only immigrants. Black people are immigrants. Asian people are immigrants. This is very dangerous for lots of people. And part of what black people have always used their vote for was not just ourselves, but thinking about everybody else. The problem is we are still seeing that nobody else is thinking about us in our communities. Nobody's thinking about our seniors. Do you know how important that Medicaid expansion would have been for people who are caregivers of parents like I've been, like so many of my friends are? That would have been a game changer for our families and our communities. Yet you see people voting against against their interest time and again, because their interest isn't in policy. Their interest is in pain. Their interest is in grievance. Their interest is in anti-Blackness. And unfortunately, like you said, a lot of us are going to be sitting on our hands telling you, we tried to tell you, 